हरे कृष्णा वेलकम बैक टू आवर न्यू वीडियो सीरीज ट्वेल्व महाजन दे आर लाइफ एंड पास टाइम्स इन दिस सीरीज वी आर नाउ डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द सेकेंड महाजन देवर्षी नारद इन द फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ दिस एपिसोड एपिसोड नंबर सिक्स वी हैव स्पोकन अबाउट इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ देवर्षी नारद एंड नाउ वी आर स्टार्टिंग एपिसोड नंबर सेवन वेयर वी विल डिस्कस मोर अबाउट हिम If you have not seen other videos, I recommend you go through the playlist, or I will give a link in the description of the video, which you can follow to see all videos. In the first video, we have spoken about the first Mahajan, Lord Brahma. Narada, who was son of Brahma Ji, was created from his mind. He was the best among all sages in celestial celestial age. When Brahma was busy creating the progeny, he ordered Prajapatis to assist him in expanding the universe. Daksha Prajapati had many children, and their sons were ready to take participate in Brahma's activity. But when Narad Muni met them, he convinced them that by participating in Brahma's activity, they will get bound in the material cycle of life and death and instead he told them the law of shastra and asked them to worship lord vishnu in the process his sons then decided to follow the path of renunciation and this actually made brahma completely enraged lord brahma became so angry that he cast narada that he will continue to travel all across universe and will not be able to stay at one place narada took that cards as a blessing and he started roaming all around the universe while chanting the holy name of lord vishnu or narayan however the cards had a counter effect on brahma ji and as per the counter effect brahma ji is not worshiped anywhere in the universe except near pushkal lake we also know that narad muni was actually the inspiration for writing shrimad bhagavatam how it happened i will tell you now narad muni's disciple srila basdev under guidance and under inspiration of narad muni he actually wrote shrimad vedas upanishads puranas sanghitas and he documented everything because at that time basdev knew that in satyajug and tretajug the human being had very long memories and for those memories only once hearing they could remember everything and that is how vedas and upanishads were called shrutis but in kalijug human being will have very short memory and they will not be able to remember anything so therefore he decided that he will write down the vedas and all the vedic literatures this happened some 5000 years ago whereas the vedas and all literatures are millions and billions years old so when narad muni once visiting different universes visited uh, srila basdev's ashram or he found that he was very morose and he was thinking lot of thing so when he saw narad muni his gurudev his spiritual master he paid his obeisances and he gave him sit sit and wanted to learn from him narad muni asked him why is he looking so morose so sila basdev said although i have documented everything but i am still not happy there is some kind of emptiness in my mind what may be the reason of that narad muni told him that the main reason of his mental condition is he did not actually speak exclusively of the supreme personality of godhead and the supreme personality of godhead lord krishna is the source or reservoir of all kind of happiness and bliss and energy and because he has described in vedas or in upanishads where sri krishna is not exclusively present so he is not very happy so under narad muni's guidance narad muni then explained about shrimad bhagavatam to shila basdev and shila basdev then documented shrimad bhagavatam 
based on the Vedanta Sutra and also with Srimad Bhagavatam is a Puran which talks of Sri Krishna and his life and his pastime. So thus we know that Srimad Bhagavatam was created by inspiration of Narad Muni only. Hare Krishna. Again, as we know, Narad Muni was the cause of writing down of Ramayana as well. Ramayana and Mahabharata are called Itihasas. So, Ramayana it was written by Balmiki Muni. Balmiki Muni in his early life was a decoit by the name of Ratnakar Dashu. And Ratnakar Dashu used to maintain his livelihood by robbing and killing people. And in the way, he was involved in lot of sinful activity. But when he once kidnapped Narad Muni or he captivated Narad Muni, he actually wanted to kill him. Narad Muni asked him that whatever he is doing, whether his family members will be will take part of the sin he is creating. Ratnakar Dashu was not very confident on that. He went home and he asked his family member what is their opinion. However, all their family member has categorically denied to take part of any of the sinful activity what he is doing because they felt that maintaining the livelihood of the family member is responsibility of Ratnakar Dashu and how is he doing is completely his prerogative. Thus, Ratnakar Dashu became very very devastated. He came back and he fell flat on Narad Muni's feet, lotus feet. So, Narad Muni asked him to chant the name of Rama. But Ratnakar Dashu was such a sinful person, he could not utter the word Rama. So, then Narad Muni for simplicity sake asked him to chant the name of Mora. Mora is the, the word Rama, if you reverse, you get Mora. And he kept on chanting Mora for many, many, uh, many, many decades, many, many centuries. And after that, Ratnakar Dashu was completely purified and he could speak Rama. Finally, by grace of Lord Brahma and by mercy of Devi Saraswati, Ratnakar Dashu could write about Ramayan. By the time Narad Muni had re christened him, as Balmiki Muni. So we see even Ramayan and Srimad Bhagavatam, both of them were written because of the inspiration of Narad Muni. Narad Muni was also the spiritual master of both Pralhad Maharaj and Dhruv Maharaj. Let us reiterate those stories as well. Pralhad Maharaj and Dhruv Maharaj were in Satyajuk. So in Satyajuk, there was a very powerful demon by the name of Hiranyakshipu. And in Hiranyakshipu's family, Pralhad Maharaj took birth. Pralhad Maharaj was a child of only six, 5 or 6 years old and he was tortured from the beginning of his life because he had been continuously saying that Lord Vishnu is the super powerful supreme personality of Godhead which was not liked by Hiranyakshipu. Hiranyakshipu had a feeling that he is the most powerful person. Now, how Pralhad Maharaj could get that knowledge? Let us go, go into detail of that story. Pralhad Maharaj's mother, her name was Kayadhu. When Pralhad Maharaj was in her womb, once he was, she was in, in, uh, in, an herit, in an hermitage where Narad Muni was explaining Srimad Bhagavatam to Kayadhu. But Kayadu, because of her fatigue and she was pregnant, she actually fell asleep and she could not hear the Bhagavatam completely. But in her womb, Prahlad Maharaj was awake and he heard the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. And when Prahlad Maharaj took birth, because of the advanced knowledge of Krishna Katha, before his birth, he started preaching about Lord Narayan, Lord Vishnu to his friends. And that is how Narad Muni became the spiritual master of Prahlad Maharaj, although Prahlad Maharaj never saw Narad Muni. We also know from the history that there was another story of Dhruv Maharaj. Dhruv Maharaj was actually son of... The, uh, also, we know the story of Dhruv Maharaj. Dhruv Maharaj was son of King Uttanpada. King Uttanpada was son of Shayangbhu Manu and he by that, by that time was almost 
मोस्ट ऑफ द अर्थ मोस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वॉज अंडर हिज किंगडम किंग उत्थन प्रदा हैड टू वाइफ हि सुनीति एंड सुरुचि सुनीति इज द ओल्डर वन एंड सुरुचि वॉज द यंगर नाउ ध्रुव महाराज वॉज सन ऑफ मदर सुनीति एंड हिज स्टेप मदर सुरुचि नेवर लाइक हिम वन डे वेन Suruchi son was playing and sitting on the lap of of Uthanpad Dhruv Maharaj in the came to the king uh, king's court and wanted to sit on lap of his father but his stepmother Suruchi stopped him from doing so on the contrary he she said that if you want to sit on the lap of your father then you go and pray to lord vishnu and take birth through my womb once you are my son you can sit in the lap of your father this was very disgusting statement because we know that if somebody prays to lord vishnu why he or she will have another birth he will actually go back to the godhead however dhruv maharaj looked at his father and his father it seems supported his younger brother who younger uh, wife because he was completely under control of her and therefore dhruv maharaj became so angry he was a kshatriya and it was a real insult for him he became so angry that he came out of the court and asked his mother suniti to do something about it suniti already was not in the good book of his father and always she was dominated by the uh, by by suruchi therefore his mother said that do not get angry on your step mother do not get angry on your father this is something your mother has step mother has shown him the road how to prosper i know the only option you can get prosperity by begging to lord vishnu so so dhruv maharaj asked how do i how do i get lord vishnu so she said i do not know where we get that but i have seen many people going to the north side forest so dhruv maharaj a 6 years old boy immediately started walking towards himalayas and went to the forest in the forest he was asking everyone he whether he may take animal or reptile or bird or anyone he was asking can you do you, are you vishnu can you take me to vishnu now looking at his eagerness narad muni was very curious and he wanted to help this little boy so he came and asked him why are you looking to looking for vishnu you want to sit on your father's lap right i am devashi narad i will take you to your father and we'll talk to him all issue will be solved then dhruv maharaj was so determined to meet lord vishnu then dhruv maharaj asked him are you lord vishnu he said no i am devashi narad then don't waste my time i want to meet lord vishnu so in the process narad muni then realized that he is very sincere he wants to get lord vishnu only when a devotee is so much sincere to lord then lord makes arrangement for him to see him and that is how narad muni was sent as a spiritual master narad muni asked him to take bath and then he initiated him with a mantra of om namo vasudevayo namo and that mantra he advised dhruv maharaj to chant continuously Dhruv Maharaj a little child was continuously chanting sit standing on one leg for 6 months and it was so determined chanting so eager that 6 months time lord vishnu himself appeared before him and when he met lord vishnu he actually forgot what he was asking but that's a different story some day when i will talk about pallad maharaj dhruv maharaj hiranyakashipu in detail in some other series i will tell that story but here what i wanted to tell whether it is dhruv maharaj whether it is prahlad maharaj whether it is ratnakar dasu humsoever we take everywhere it is narad muni who was the person who inspired them to come to the path of bhakti and he was so powerful person from that angle i will actually end this particular episode with another story and very fascinating story in my in my mind that is story of mrigari now who was mrigari mrigari was a hunter once narod muni 
took bath in the Devaprayag where the confluence of Ganga, Jamuna and Saraswati. After taking bath, when he was very happy, when he was walking, he saw a little distance away, one hair was actually wriggling in pain and he was half dead, he was hit by an arrow. Narutmani felt very bad about that hair. He went a few steps ahead and then he saw a pig in the same condition. Then after some time he saw a, a porcupine in the same condition. And he was feeling very, very, very disturbed that somebody has, has killed the animals and made them half killed. And then when he was going forward, he found a very strong, well-built hunter is aiming his arrow to a deer. Now Narad Muni purposely stepped out loudly and the deer ran away. And this actually enraged that hunter. And he was so angry, he wanted to give his vengeance to Narad Muni. But Narad Muni was a great sage and because of his, his uh, spiritual power or mystic power, he made him completely wordless. He could not say a single word. He could not lift any of his limb. And then that person explained him that his name is Mrigari. He is a hunter. So Narad Muni told him that killing one uh, animal itself is a sin and you are leaving this animal as a half killed, which is even more sinner. Why are you doing that? Mrigari said he, didn't, he does not find it any sin. He has been doing it because his father also used to do it. And his father has told him that this way he get lot of lot of enjoyment. So Narad Muni, then what he did, he actually by his mystic power, he showed him his future, future life. After his death, Mrigari saw all those animals whom he has made half killed, they are all torturing him either by their beak or by their nail or by their, uh, by their claw and Mrigari was suffering because of the torture. So, he was very afraid. He said, I want to get rid of this. I do not want to face this future. Then Narad Muni said, the only way you can get rid of this, you break your bow and you take a vow not to kill any animal anymore. So Brigari said, how can I do it? Because this is the only way I can maintain my family. If I do not kill the animals, how I will maintain my family? Then Narad Muni said that do not worry on that. I will take care of your maintenance. You go home and bring your whole family over here. Migari went home and he brought his family, wife, everybody and Narad Muni asked them to take bath in the, in the Devo Prayag, come to him and then he gave him the initiation of Harinam Mahamantra to them. So, Migari, he told him that you leave everything uh, and you chant this mantra. So, Migari made a very simple cottage in the forest itself and he started chanting. And Narad Muni was very happy. He walked away from that place. Now, because Migari has left hunting and he was doing chanting of God's name, his neighbors became so inspired that they all what they all donated the food and everything to them every day. So his problem of his food and maintaining livelihood was automatically solved. After many, many months or maybe years, once Narad Muni, when came back to the same place, he saw that the chanting sound was coming inside that cottage. And the cottage is full of greeneries with all of creepers and all other trees around. When Brigadi saw Narad Muni and this time Narad Muni came with one of his uh, sage friend, his name was Parvata. When they, they, when they saw that Narad Muni and Parvata Muni are coming, they very hastily come to, uh, wanted to come to Narad Muni and pay their obeisances. But while coming, suddenly Brigadi could see that on that ground, there are a lot of ants were going. So immediately, Migari bowed down, took out his one of his cloth and wanted to protect the ant before going to the Dandabath in front of Narad Muni. Which means, Migari has changed completely. A person who was leaving the animals half killed, he was taking care 
that by mistake also ants are not killed by him. This made Narad Muni very, very happy. So this shows that whenever we come across to a pure Vaishnav, to Mahabhagavad, we changed completely. This Vigari story is fascinating. So in this episode, I wanted to take out some stories and, and glorify Narad Muni, how he made changes or, or how he transformed people's life completely and brought them in the path of bhakti. In the next episode, we will discuss more about Narad Muni's life and pastime. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare.